Welcome to Grace Today, a daily vlog from Grace Community Baptist Church designed to equip you and encourage you with the Word of God. Let's begin. In today's episode, we're going to begin looking at Hebrews chapter 4, and we'll see one passage that's probably very familiar to many of us, but today I want you to look at this passage with me and see Christ is greater because He gives us rest. He gives us rest. Look with me at Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Therefore, let us fear if while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. For indeed, we have, the, or we have had good news preached to us, just as they also. But the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. For we who have believed enter that rest, just as he said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has said somewhere concerning the seventh day, And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage, They shall not enter my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly had good news preached to them, failed to enter because of disobedience, he again fixes a certain day, today, saying through, the, through David, after so long a time, just as he had said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken on an, another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works as God did from his. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest, so that no one will fall through following the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joint and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have had we have to do. Dear friends, one verse in that probably stuck out, right? We we're all familiar with and we celebrate the truth of Hebrews chapter four, verse twelve. That's probably the most familiar verse of this passage to all of us. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. We celebrate that verse and the truth that it's revealed in that verse. But let me ask you, have you ever considered that verse in the context of what the author of Hebrews is saying here? That verse and its powerful truth about the Word of God and its ability to expose the heart and soul of man, its sharpness, its power, is given in the context of this warning against turning away from Christ, against false profession. He's continuing in this passage the flow of thought that has come before, where he used Israel as this warning against turning back, the, the people of Israel in the desert wanderings, he used them as an example of those who had the promises of God, had heard the promises of God, who got right up to the edge of it and turned away in disbelief, turned away in disobedience. He's using that warning to encourage his readers to be zealous, to hold fast to what they had heard, to truly believe in it and trust in it, and to be eager to enter the rest that comes from that. And he's using this verse this passage that we're so familiar with, Hebrews 4.12, as a strengthening of that warning. Friends, that's amazing. And it should be a great example to us. The Word of God is powerful. It exposes the heart and soul of man. It is the best tool that we have for evangelism. Here, it's being used evangelistically. Remember, we've talked about at many points along the way as we've been through these first three and a half chapters of Hebrews. He continues to go to Scripture to make his argument. The writer continues to appeal to Scripture. 
Here's what scripture says that shows that Christ is greater than the angels. Here's what scripture says that shows that Christ is the author and perfecter of our salvation. Here's what scripture says that shows that Christ is greater than Moses. Here's what scripture shows that warns us against turning back in disbelief and disobedience. He's allowing scripture to have that work. And that's a great example to us. Friends, there is surely a place in evangelism for personal testimony, for summarizing the truths of the Bible. There's certainly a, a need for us to live out what we believe, to live out our doctrine so that we don't defy our testimony. And living a life of faithfulness before someone can be a certain testimony to them. But the most powerful weapon that we have in evangelism is the sword of the Spirit, is the Word of God. And we must not use those other good things to give us an example or, or an excuse, rather, to neglect our most powerful weapon. I'm not telling you, don't share your testimony. Don't summarize the truths of God. Don't have a lifestyle that, leads, that gives a testimony to Christ. Absolutely do those things. But don't use those things to neglect using the word of God in evangelism because it is more powerful than anything we could say or do in evangelism because it points people to, as it does in this passage, to the rest that is available in Christ. And that's really the main point of this passage, that Christ is greater because he provides rest. And this continues to come as a form of warning. He's telling them, be fearful. Let us be fearful that we or those we know would be those who came close and looked like they were about to enter the rest who didn't enter the rest. Let us be fearful that like there were Israel that that any of us would be like those Israelites who were so close on the edge of the promised land and turned back in disbelief. They had heard the good news. They had heard the promises of God, but it wasn't united with faith so they turned back. He's using that as a warning to Hebrew believers specifically, and I think it's a good warning to all of us that have heard the good news, that may even have a clear mental understanding of the facts of Christ and the, the proclamation of the gospel, but that it hasn't been united with faith, with belief, and therefore we would turn back in disobedience and rebellion. Friends, let me encourage you. The book of Hebrews contains a lot of sober warnings. It does not teach that we can lose our salvation. It does not teach that. Any who has entered into God's rest are in God's rest. They are in his hand. Nothing can pluck us out of his hand. But this does warn us against false profession. It does warn us against those who have heard the good news, who understand the good news, but who have not believed in the good news. And that should give us a healthy, fearful reverence that would drive us to proclaim the word of God and to earnestly seek that rest. Now listen, he's not teaching in this passage that we can earn that rest, but that we should earnestly seek it, that it should be the joy of our hearts to seek after Christ, to follow after Christ steadfastly, no matter what forces come against us, no matter what would tempt us, to turn away because the turning away doesn't reveal a loss of salvation but the fact that there never truly was belief there never truly was a trust in God and I want you to see lastly before we close the urgency of this passage the urgency of this passage he says that the opportunity to enter the rest remains but he urges them using this quote from David today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. So let me encourage you, friends. You may be watching this and not a part of our church, and you've never truly believed in Christ. Let me encourage you. If you've heard the good news, today, hear his voice. Do not harden his heart. Believe in Christ and live. Believe in Christ and enter into his rest. His burden is easy. His yoke is life. Belief in Christ is rest. It's not work. We can't work to earn our salvation. But it's resting in the greatness of the rest that God has provided for us. 
And let me encourage you, even if you are in our church or in another church and you're watching this, and this is a convicting passage to you, this is convicting you, that maybe you are one of those who has made a false profession, you are one of those who have heard the good news, and you generally agree with it, but you've never truly believed in him, you're continuing in disbelief and disobedience. Friends, don't, don't turn back, don't turn away. Trust in Christ and live. Today, hear his voice and do not harden your hearts. Believe in him. And I know there comes a healthy fear of this. And that's a good thing. So if you're struggling, let me just encourage you to seek the Lord. Ask him to show you the truth of your standing before him. And then dig into his word. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is the best mirror for the soul. So dig into his word. See what it says about salvation. See what it says about the Christian life. See what it says about those who are resting and trusting in Christ. And ask the Lord to be that mirror for your soul. And then respond by faith to him and to what he shows you. Grace Community. This is a great study we're enjoying in Hebrews. It's powerful theology. It's sober warnings. But friends, let me encourage you with this truth. In Christ, there is true rest. There is true salvation because Christ is greater. I love you, Grace Community. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to the Grace Today vlog. For more information on Grace Community Baptist Church in Elgin, Texas, how you can support this ministry, check out the links in the description below. See you tomorrow.